Shindulamjandibzajirmande <laughs> Good morning or good uh, afternoon. I hope not good evening. Everyone, first of all, um, I would like to say welcome to all of you. Um, And thank you very much for being here and joining us for um, Dharma teachings um, and practice together. Um, um, and um, um, all of you are attending from different places to receive this uh, so-called Pardo teachings. So I appreciate your great effort and your inspiration. So I'm very, very happy to see all of you and very happy to give this teaching. Um, and I think this is my third time given Pardo teaching in the West. Um, so uh, um, I've done this in Tibet many times, but in the West, I think my third time. And I also would like to say thank you to everyone, students, board members, volunteers, and coordinators for all the help, uh, because without your help, it's impossible to have this opportunity. So thank you. And I just want to let you know that I usually, um, one important thing is myself as just Buddhist, practitioner, that's it. I have some um, good experience from Buddhist teachings and uh, um, understand knowledge. And I have amazing lineage and great masters. And I received all kinds of Buddhist teachings from um, four different traditions. Buddhist teachings and also uh, empowerment from my teachers for many, many years. Um, that's all. Other than that, I never really think that, you know, um, I never uh, identified myself as a sort of great teacher or Buddhist master. You know, I really never think um, like that. So please, uh, I just, want to let you know that uh, do not consider me as your root teacher or uh, as something very special. Um, there's not much difference between you and me. Um, we all um, are, we are all the same. Our minds work in the same way. We experience the same kind of emotions and um, feelings, and we all want to achieve happiness, right? And we all also amazingly possess the Buddha nature. Um, and we all have capacity to become a good human being 
and to make our lives happy, our lives meaningful. Uh, so we all have the capacity to help each other. Uh, we practice together. We listen teaching together. We say prayers together. Uh, all of these uh, activities we do together as a Sangha um, that can bring us a great motivation and great harmony and that can bring us a great um, achievement and peace and happiness. So if we practice together like that, that is what we call a great Sangha. And that is a, a really true meaning of Sangha, which is uh, one of the three jewels, right? Sangha, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. So we are the Sangha. Um, according to Mahayana, Sangha could be, according to Mahayana, you know, Sangha could be just a one Buddhist practitioner, or it could be many Buddhist practitioners, you know, uh, practicing Dharma together. So when the Sangha practice Dharma, you will have chance to discover the realization and through that realization, the Sangha uh, becomes the Buddha. So you can say Buddha, Dharma, Sangha, or Sangha, Dharma, Buddha. Sangha practice Dharma, then become a Buddha. Or Buddha practice Dharma, from Mahayana point of view, as one Buddhist practitioner, and then become um, Buddha. So that's why this practice, you know, we practice the three jewels uh, as a foundation, right? No matter what you practice, you say the uh, three a refuge prayer three times, and then bodhicitta prayer three times. That's no matter what you practice, you have to make that prayer as, um, as a foundation. Now, uh, before we start the, the part of the actual teaching and meditation, as usual, I would like to begin by reminding you that it is very important to have a correct motivation. Um, because as Patron would say, the motivation for doing anything has a, has a, has a very powerful, uh, very profound uh, effect on the result. Um, and also Buddha, Lord Buddha said that uh, all of our future experience depends on our intention now. So it's impossible to help others without having a good intention. So please take a moment to correct your motivation for the day and before the teaching and we must uh, set a, sp a special sort of motivation, uh, the bodhicitta, aim to attain enlightenment for the sake of all sentient beings. So usually that's, I just remind you to correct your motivation, but today I'm going to tell you how to actually set your motivation because this is the, the first day. So you have to do this all the time. So I'm not going to tell you all the time, but the first day, how to set your motivation before we start the actual teaching, the Pardo teaching. So usually it's not just only for today, but usually, um, 
you sit comfortably and then sometimes you close your eyes and then you should recognize that, you know, uh, uh, I usually think like today, today is a precious day. I mean, not, not just today, but whenever you do this, the today, right? Pres you are thinking just present moment. So this moment, you know, the, 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 the life you have in this moment is very precious, very important. Um, and this is a, a great opportunity to practice Dharma um, so that achieve uh, liberation. So you should make a commitment. You should say something like that. I will be kind today. Today is very important. I'm grateful, you know, this moment. It is the best gift and very precious. And I'm so grateful for all the good people in my life. I'm so grateful, you know, for all the good opportunities to practice Buddha Dharma. Um, so you kind of like appreciate, you know, I have enough amazing things in my life. You know, you, you can think all these kind of good things, right? So basically, you appreciate your life. That's actually uh, the motivation you know, when you start motivate, uh, motivation, correct your motivation, Buddhist, you know, like uh, really important, appreciate your life, you know, don't deny or, you know, ignore yourself and, you know, give up everything. That's not sort of right to think. Basically, you have to appreciate your life and recognize the good opportunities. Um, that's important. Then ask yourself and think sort of carefully what is the most important thing for you to do um, in your life or at this moment. Then you see, you know, then you have all these thoughts, right? Thoughts can let go of your unpleasant situation, let go of your uh, if you have worry for something, let go of wor worry for everything. Let go of your negative thoughts and emotions. And, and try to be uh, in this present moment. In order to do that, you have to be mindful bring peace, a relaxation into your mind and also body, into your body. And then, you know, so you think all of that and then just uh, relax, you know, try to relax. Then you breathe in sort of gently, your breath moving into your whole body sort of completely and then feel the positive energy and uh, kind of experience, you know, this peaceful relaxation, all of that, you know, you experience that in your mind uh, very sort of peacefully. Um, and you should recognize how fortunate you are. As I said, appreciating the life you have in this moment and also appreciating this precious time. And then when you breathe out, um, your breath goes into all sort of, you know, living beings including the animals. Don't worry about if you don't know, I mean, you don't know all of this individually, but that doesn't matter. All sentient beings, include animals, they all want happiness, the same as you. 
and then think about all different kinds of sufferings and unhappiness all these sentient beings go through. And there is a, not a single living being in this world without suffering. And then tell yourself that it is for their well-being that I am going to practice these precious uh, Pardo teachings together, you know, meditation. And you say, you know, I'm going to keep them in your practice and also like mentally, you know, you can send them good thoughts and to wish sort of happiness to all of them. Um, okay, that's how you set up uh, your motivation very quickly, right? So you can do this. So just appreciate your life and recognize the good opportunity and uh, fortunate you are because then you are you have all this practice in, you know meditation you know teaching listen teaching all of this really good sort of spiritual uh, thought you know all of this then you can um, not just for yourself but you're doing this for all uh, sentient beings basically okay that's how you set of your motivation not just for today right all the time i always say this i will say this because remind you so important okay so yeah take a moment and uh, Set of your motivation like that. Sometimes you don't feel it, right? Sometimes you try to set up your motivation, but at the same time you have all these other thoughts because your mind and body are not relaxed yet, right? Don't worry about it. Just try and... Um, try to remember how important set a motivation. And then once your motivation is um, established, either genuine or indirectly, then you try to relax and then listen to the teaching, Dharma teachings with a concentrated mind and mindfulness. Okay? Um, today, we are going to study, practice Pardo teachings together, together, okay? So, please think carefully, and you should try to find something that is, uh, that is, um, truth uh, that sort of useful that is beneficial to your everyday life to find that kind of you know instruction um, and collect sort of uh, you should collect the instructions that really helps your everyday life and write down um, that's very important and all of all of these 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 pardo teachings the point is sharing a common goal of helping people to become a good human beings and uh, leading a better life and happy life um Usually when people 
hear the Pardo about the Pardo teachings, people think it is about it is about uh, death or after death, but that's not uh, that's not all. The Pardo teachings are about our lives, you know, which is how to how to live in sort of consciously or mindfully, and also how to die consciously or mindfully. That's all. And according to the Pardo teachings, of course, we will talk more about death because it's inevitable, so it's very important. Uh, but death is another, you know, appreciating life. If you look at it that way, I mean, if there is no death, then there is no life. Therefore, basically, the Pardo teachings are about life. So we're going to talk about our lives. Okay, nothing else. Talk about our life. And now, in order to talk about life, we need to understand what life is. What is the purpose of life? Why are we in this kind of situation? Why do we have so many thoughts, whether they are negative or positive or whatever. Why do we have so many thoughts that constantly comes in our head and never cannot stop? And then also, where are we going? How should we make this life meaningful? We'll talk um, all of that. During this, uh, during this retreat. Um, and every time when we talk about life, as you know, from the Buddhist point of view, and Buddhist definition of life, it is something that goes around and around. That's why what we call it Sitpa Khorwa in Tibetan. Sitpa Khorwa. Sitpa means in English, possible. Everything is possible with this life. Everything is possible. That means, like for example, right now we are a human being with the, a, this, this precious life. Right? But all of the sudden, becoming an animal is possible. I'm drinking a tea. Beautiful. Very testy right now as a human being. We all like, but all of a sudden I become an animal, then I don't, don't drink this kind of tea. Then my perception definitely will change. Then maybe I like water. So it's possible being born into different, different uh, places, like different realms is possible. I'm, 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 I'm trying to talk about this sutta. What is the sutta means in English word possible. Enlightenment is possible. Freedom from suffering is possible. So anything is possible with this life. That's why we say sutta. You know, it means there are all these possibilities. It's amazing. Um, in Tibetan language, Sutpa has many different meanings, you know. One is that, and then Sutpa also means all living beings. 
all living beings, which means one who has a mind, who has understanding, or who has a feeling. That's also we call sutpa. So, you know, that, 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 that means that there are I mean, different people, different animals, different beings in this world, right? But basically we are all living beings. It means everyone wishes and everyone wants to achieve happiness. Okay, that's why we say sutpa. Sutpa khorwa means Samsara, right? Sutpa Nroa in Tibetan, which means Nroa means also all living beings with possibilities. And also at this, you know, like Sutpa also means the intermediate state in Tibetan language, which is something in between, right? We're going to, like, for example, right now, this very moment we have is in between past and future, in between. So whenever we are in between two things, two moments, that is in Tibetan language is sutpa. So right now we are in between the time we are born and the time uh, when we die. So this is called the intermediate state of uh, possibility or sutpa, pardo, or we often say samsara, or in Tibetan we say sutpa khorwa, okay? So khorwa, again, khorwa means, as I said, something that goes around and around, meaning like life after life, whether you believe or not. That's what we believe, you know? It's like, it's like, a, it's like the water well, that goes sort of endlessly around, around, right? There's no, so the Khorva therefore has no beginning and no end. Why? Because it is motivated by ignorance, attachment, aversion, and so on and so forth. Therefore, life is continuation and it's always changeable, not, not permanent, changeable. Always changeable, taking different shapes, uh, being sort of different beings and being full of um, possibilities, okay? That is sort of basically the definition of life. All of that together, life. So you see, all of this um, uh, interpretation of Tibetan sutpa all together we call life or samsara. So without understanding this life, all living beings, according to Buddhism, you know, continuously goes around and around. This is what Buddha, uh, Buddhist calls ignorance, right? This ignorance becomes the cause of all samsaric delusions. And out of this not knowing, we create, you know, the two most powerful emotions. This is how our desire and anger start to develop. Now, when we talk about ignorance, there are two, two types of ignorance. There is, we call mixed ignorance, okay? Mixed ignorance, which is mixed with desire and hatred. Those desire and hatred out of ignorance, that mixed ignorance. And then there is also the other ignorance. There is also unmixed, unmixed ignorance that is not associ associated with, 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 with desire and hatred. 
but it's simply ignorance by itself. And this also has two types. Not being aware of the situation at all, and also misperceiving the situation. So the first not being aware of the situation means just not realizing what the situation is and not having any desire to find out the truth. That is an ignorance, the first. And then second, so the misperceiving the situation, ignorance means understanding the situation incorrectly. So we have a mistaken belief about it. The dualistic mind is always perceiving things in an incorrect way. When there is no wisdom, there is no clear path. Our mind is always going to be confused because it cannot figure anything out when the mind is influenced by ignorance. The root of ignorance is the conception of a self. We are believing in self. And as long as we are believing in a permanent self, then we are not experiencing ourselves as a beautiful life because then we don't experience the truth of life that you know so we are experiencing ourselves as a sort of as a bundle of thoughts emotions memories ideas permanence there are so many things you know images all of that together we we uh, would think of ourselves or our or myself. So it makes no sense to say there is no self, right? We are believing that I am the same person. I was yesterday or last year or, 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 you know, 20 years ago, we think still I am the same person. But if you think carefully, reasonably, from the Buddhist point of view, the, you know, the, this self, you know, permanent self is, is um, what do you call it? Wrong perception. because of the, as I said, that ignorance, misunderstand the truth. So the point is, as a human being, we have to live in this world comfortably, happily, right? And the purpose of life is understand the truth of the nature of life. That is, that is the purpose, purpose of life, right? We, as a Buddhist practitioner, we need to understand the truth, the truth. But, you know, when um, it comes to practice, we really don't understand how to achieve that kind of life. I mean, there are so many reasons. As a Buddhist practitioner, we say life is, life is uh, love, love, you know, the true love. True love is the, is the usually the action of bodhicitta mind, right? Bodhicitta and also wisdom. But when we think about our lives, we can see that we are full of fear. Fear of death, 
fear of sickness, fear of getting old, fear of not living a successful life, fear of losing, fear of suffering, etc., etc. So the question is, how can we clarify all of this? How do we end all of this? How, how do we end of our attachment? If we can purify all of this confusion and end of attachment behind there, there is a term, there, there is amazing quality of freedom. So whatever we perceive this with, uh, with this dualistic mind is unreal. So how do we eliminate this? Uh, how do I say misconception uh, conception of a permanent self? Okay, um, don't go there. Uh, is a part we said that when we take a, take a path that is without confusion, without confusion, then the path is able to clear away all of these delusions, these confusions. Then we will develop human quality, human qualities. So that is a. Uh, There are much more though, but um, that's enough. I mean, that is a short sort of definition of what is life, what, what, what life is. You know, study, you know, this teaching, the Bardo teachings, we have to understand, we have to understand what life is. Okay, that's that. If you have a question, maybe you can write down there and then sometime I will answer if I have time about life, whatever you want, whatever you have. Now I'm going to talk about Pardo, the Pardo um, Pardo is, is a Tibetan word, right, Pardo. Uh, And of course, um, intermediate state, which is something, as I said, in between. Whenever we are in between two moments, we are in a pardo state. As I said, pardo state, not necessarily uh, between death and after death, right? But basically we are all the time, we are in the pardo, sort of intermediate state. Because there is a past, there's a future, there's a present, right? So, so the past moment has ended and then the future moment has not yet arisen, then in between. Therefore, the pardo teachings are about how to make a good sort of connection between these moments. So that's why what I, you know, Pardo is, about, Pardo teachings are about our lives, means, you know, past always, there, there's past, present, future, past ended, future not yet arising. So we actually in a present moment all the time. So we should, how do we, how do we understand? How do we recognize this present moment and be mindful? I think that's very important, right? As I said, in general, many people think the word pardo is talking about the intermediate state 
between death and rebirth. When, when a person dies, you know, people say, now oh, this person is in the pardo. We, people don't say, like, you are in the pardo right now. People never say that. People say, this person died, so he or she is in the pardo. But as, as I said, pardo is not only about death and rebirth. From a spiritual point of view, when we look at our lives, the current life is a result uh, from the past life, so to speak. You know, this life will be the cause of the future life. So there's sort of like connection there, you know, like interdependent. As I always say, you know, you know, I think Western society has a, a very limited understanding of what happens in the process of death, and especially what happens after death. Some people Um, some people think that this kind of belief is only a religious idea, right? And, um, and they accept that past and future lives exist, and they believe in rebirth based on faith alone. So if... If I'm a not religious believer, then I don't believe in, in past and future life at all. Some people think that. Some people think that the existence of past and future life is unclear. So you can't say there's no past or future life because you don't know. But you also can't say there, is, there, there are past and future lives either because you have no proof. So this kind of people, you know, uh, keep this question sort of um, in their mind. I don't know. There is a past life, future life. I don't know. But as a Buddhist people believe in rebirth because of many reasons, I will tell you that. Now, what happens after we die or what happens between previous life and this life. And we're going to talk about that. So we have life, death, after death, and rebirth. Basically three things. Life, yeah, the four things. Life, death, after death, and rebirth. So these four time sort of uh, periods represent the four intermediate states which are called the nature, natural part of this life, right? Remember this life, death, after death, and rebirth. So the life is the natural part of this life, and then uh, the painful part of dying, and then after death, the luminous part of ultimate nature, and then rebirth, the karmic part of becoming. These are what we call intermediate states or pardo. So the pardo teachings can be taught in many different ways, but according to pardo tutor, pardo tutor chimmo in Tibetan means you know liberation through hearing and the pardos. They are six different pardos, okay? Six different pardos. The four pardos that I just mentioned to you, life, death, after death, and rebirth. And these are the four pardos that we have, but there can be two additional pardos included with, with that. There are the two, now two, illusory pardo of uh, dreaming and practice pardo of meditation or samadhi. So these two pardos 
are usually include within the natural pardo of this life, right? This life, life we have we have uh, the pardo of dreaming, pardo of samadhi, pardo of meditation. Um, so total, now you see, there are six different pardos. So we will discuss each of these pardos more, not, not in very detail, but more. And I will discuss um, three things during the pardo teachings, okay? First, what it is. Second, how it is experienced. And third, how to practice during that time or how to deal with those experiences during that state. Each pardo. So please keep them in your mind. Uh, these are sort of important points or the main subject of this pardo teachings. Um, and in the Pardo teachings, it also talks about how the Pardos appear to different levels of individuals. For example, how the Pardos appear to an ordinary person who has never practiced and how the pardo experience appear to a practitioner who has some kind of degree of experience of pardo practice. And how this pardo appears to a person who has perfect realization or perfect experienced, you know, Buddhist practitioner. So three, you know, basically there are three ways this pardo appears or experienced. So we need to understand the teachings and practice because some of these pardo, uh, these pardos uh, already appear to us like uh, the natural pardo of this life, right? Right now, we are in the pardo in between birth and death. Um, and also, we have illusory pardo of dreaming and practice pardo of meditation. So we are experiencing these pardos each and every day. And sooner or later, some of these pardos will happen to us, like death, like after death. And then, if you, if you believe, the, the, the rebirth pardos. So therefore it is important to study the teachings on the different pardos uh, because we have the different uh, state, right? Of life, life four, life, death, after death, rebirth, I think we have, that's easy to remember, right? And then also each of this pardo has um, its own unique sort of instructions and meditation practice that all these great masters given us. So I will teach you uh, the cycle of the six pardos, which uh, describes uh, your journey through different state of consciousness experience in the part, both life and death. Now, the Pardo teachings are taught at all levels of Buddhism, from beginners to, to more advanced students, as I said, how they experience about this Pardo, how appears this part of an experience different to you know for different um, people 
because there are different ways to practice this part of teachings, whether you are a beginner or advanced student. And the teachings and instructions uh, we will receive are mostly from the the, the Tejer teachings, okay? Padma Sambhava transmitted these teachings to all of his disciples and so on and so. And through that lineage, these Bardo teachings were practiced continuously until now. I mean, very famous. I mean, it's about our lives. And particularly these Bardo teachings that I'm going to give uh, come from the Teja Revealer, Karma Langba, in the 14th century. Karma Langba was a great Teja Revealer from the Nyingma lineage. So, Teju Revealer is, uh, it's, it's very interesting, I think, to you, Westerns, they are, this Teju Revealer is a person who remembers the teachings from Pamasambhava after sort of different lifetimes and discover the teachings. That, that is one big reason I think Tibetans like totally believe in reincarnations and you know, rebirth after death, all of this. You have no idea about this great uh, Tejo revealers or Tibetans Terton, Terton. Ter means Tejo, very like precious. Ton means like discover, you know, reveal, reveal. Tertun. There, there are so many different ways they can discover their Tejo teachings. Sometimes they find letters inside kind of strange rocks. Sometimes they find letters inside the statues or whatever. Sometimes they find the uh, letters, the um, inside the rock that is in, in the ocean, in the water. And when they open them, there's some sort of uh, words, you know, messages, you know, that are, they called the uh, uh, reading in Dagini language, Dagini language. You know, there might be just uh, three letters, four letters, whatever, but from each letters, these treasure revealers will re, uh, you know, remember thousands of thousands of words in, of teaching. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure you're interested in this or not, but this is related to our teaching. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about this, how it came about this Teju teachings, okay? And these Teju teachings can be, you know, like prayers, sadhanas, uh, and most of the time, you know, like Dzogchen teachings. Also, there are like songs, rituals, etc. But when they discover them, they do not amazingly, you know, they do not need to think at all. That is kind of very unique, I think. It all arises spontaneously and very naturally. So everything is kind of like uh, automatic, you know. They are 
these tenure te uh, reviewers are entitled to remember those teachings. It's like this morning you have, like I have a breakfast and right now I just clearly remember what I had, what I eat. Like that kind of, when they receive the teachings, they must be received the teachings with a recognition of the nature mind so that they never forget the teachings. I mean, like, you know, the Pamasambhava sealed those teacher teachings in their nature mind so that they will remember them in their next lifetime. They cannot keep the teacher teachings with this dualistic mind because they would never remember the teachings with the dualistic mind. So, Therefore, my teachers always say, like, when this Teju reviewer must be recognized the nature mind, because of the, the Teju teachings came from um, nature mind. So that's why Teju, uh, you know, they were hidden as a Teju to be revealed at a later uh, time by uh, Teju revealers, Tirtans. So the Pardo teachings were brought to Tibet by Padmasambhava in the eighth century. And he transmitted these teachings to all members of his disciples. Amasambo is so important, um, second Buddha. Consider, we consider Amasambo as second Buddha because I mean, this uh, Tejo teachings and the Dzogchen, you know, this um, Dantic teachings all exist before that. But he, Amasambo, came to Tibet and he really transmitted these teachings very, you know, to, you know, lots of his disciples. So these Tejo revealers uh, and their dis discoveries, um, this Tejo, like Karma Langba, him actually self was a disciple of Pamasambhava. So as I said, this kind of like Tibetans believe in reincarnations because of these Tejo revealers, they discover these teachings and all these histories, this, you know, make us believe in reincarnation, sort of means they prove their past life. When I was this, when I received these teachings, that place with these disciples from this teacher, they kind of remember all of that, not just to make, make them up. So anyway, these Pardo teachings that I'm going to teach you are the instructions hidden by Pama Sambhava and discovered by Nyingma master Karma Langba. And Karma Langba, of course, received these teachings from Pama Sambhava when he was um, his disciples in Peru's life. So I'm going to use the Karma Langba's, the root text, okay? This six, there are six Pardo teachings, right? So I hope you have those uh, texts. The six root texts, uh, root sort of verses of the six pardos. So these root pardo text is some of the most famous uh, parts of the great liberation through hearing in the pardo. We call it pardo tudor chimmo. And as I said, it is a it, it is a treasure text revealed by the 14th century, the great Nyingma master Karma Langba. So this teaching offers instructions on each of the six intermediate states or six pardos and help us to live a better life while preparing for death and beyond death. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's very big topic 
this part of the teaching. So I will not be able to talk all of them in very detail. I mean, within three days, no way. But I will try my best and I will talk especially about the most important part so that you can practice the essence of this six bardo teachings. And uh, okay, I'm going to stop there. That, that, that's a sort of general explanation of about our lives, about Tejur teachings, um, and also how to set up your motivation. That's uh, for this morning session. Mm -hmm. Then I will start the, the Bardo teaching. We have three sessions a day. So each section Um, I will talk about the, so I will try to talk all of these six part of those teachings, okay? But now, um, stop there for a while and then, um, going to meditate for a few minutes. We have, uh, uh, we have one minute left, my bad. Um, maybe I will tell you. Okay, maybe when, maybe we should take a break now. And then when we start the next section, I think uh, before start teaching, I will give you a little bit of instructions how to meditate and may, maybe we should meditate for a few minutes. But now I think, uh, yeah, I'm going to stick with this um, teaching schedule. So nine to 10, 15, um, 9 to 10, 15, we have teaching meditation and then 10, 15 to 10, 30 break. So now it's break time, okay? Um, please come back on time <laughs> and we then practice a little bit, okay?